Hello and welcome. I'm Carla Shepard Rubinger, the Executive Director of the Rosalind Franklin Society. Our mission is to support and showcase women and underrepresented minorities in science, medicine, and biotechnology. We're excited to welcome you to our first presentation for Monthly Mondays, featuring today the new White House Initiative on Women's Health Research, chaired by Dr. Carolyn Missouri from Yale University. We are also pleased to once again have Juliana Lemure, Deputy Editor at Gen, to be our moderator for this first session. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you so much, Carla, and hello, everyone, and welcome to the first session of our new series called Monthly Mondays, being brought to you by the Rosalind Franklin Society. We want to share this new opportunity with you as part of our ongoing mission to showcase and support women and minorities in science. And there is not a better month to start than Women's History Month. This exciting new webinar series of interviews and presentations is dedicated to showcasing the inspiring work, innovative research, and transformative achievements of women and minorities in the fields of science, medicine, and biotechnology. In partnership with Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News and Marianne Liebert Publishers, we will showcase the significant contributions and unique paths of women in academia, public agencies, and industry. We are excited to introduce for our first monthly Monday, Dr. Carolyn Missouri, who serves as the chair of the White House Initiative on Women's Health Research and has recently joined the office of the First Lady. Dr. Missouri comes to the White House from Yale School of Medicine, where she has served as a professor in women's health research and professor of psychiatry and psychology. After three years at the NIH and fellowship training at Yale, Dr. Missouri joined the Yale faculty as an active clinician and NIH-funded researcher. She created Women's Health Research at Yale, the university's interdisciplinary research center on the health of women, which studies a wide breadth of topics from cardiovascular disease to cancers. She holds a PhD from Penn State University and did her fellowship and postdoc work at Yale. Now, I will turn it over to Dr. Missouri for her talk entitled, Launching the New White House Initiative, on women's health research. Dr. Missouri, the floor is yours. Thank you, Juliana and Carla. And my thanks to the Rosalind Franklin Society for this invitation to speak with you today on behalf of the first ever White House Initiative on Women's Health Research, which I have the honor of chairing. Women make up half of the population, but for far too long, women's health research has been underfunded and understudied. While we have made tremendous progress, particularly over the last two decades, from revolutionary discoveries in certain conditions affecting women to increasing the number of women enrolled in clinical trials, we still know too little about how to effectively prevent, diagnose, and treat a wide range of health conditions in women. From conditions that affect women uniquely for example, endometriosis and fibroids, to conditions that affect women disproportionately, such as Alzheimer's disease and rheumatoid arthritis, and to conditions that affect women differently than they do men, such as those found in heart disease. To close these research gaps and pioneer the next generation of discoveries, the President and First Lady launched the White House Initiative on Women's Health Research, which aims to fundamentally change how we approach and fund women's health research. Since the initiative was launched in November of 2023, Dr. Jill Biden has led the way. She has traveled the country from California to Illinois, to Georgia, to Massachusetts, to Cambridge, touring research institutions and speaking directly with women and with innovators about the need to transform women's health research. From lab tours to listening sessions, she is hearing firsthand about the cutting edge research that is possible when we invest in women's health and about what we must do to support the breakthroughs we need in critical areas like women's heart health. Just last month, the First Lady traveled to Cambridge, Massachusetts to announce ARPA-H's first ever sprint for women's health. With a commitment of $100 million, 
dedicated to transformative research and development in women's health. This new sprint will accelerate the next generation of discoveries from early stage proofs of concept to products that are ready to be commercialized. And this is just the beginning. During his State of the Union address, the president called on Congress to make a bold transformative investment of $12 billion in new funding for women's health research. These new funds would establish a central fund for women's health at the National Institutes of Health to advance an interdisciplinary research agenda. And the funds would be used to create a new nationwide network of research centers of excellence and innovation in women's health. As we work with Congress to secure these investments, we're taking action where we can to advance women's health research. That's why on Monday, this past Monday, the president issued a new executive order on women's health research and innovation that directs the most comprehensive set of executive actions ever taken to advance research on women's health. Through this executive order, the president is directing federal agencies to integrate the broad scope of the health conditions affecting women across the federal research portfolio by strengthening research and data standards related to women's health. The executive order also prioritizes investments in women's health research with a focus on driving innovation through entities like ARPA-H and the Small Business Innovation Research Program. It also is gonna galvanize new research on women's midlife health, including disorders and conditions that often occur after menopause, like heart attacks, Alzheimer's disease, and osteoporosis. Through this executive order, the president is directing federal agencies to assess unmet needs to support women's health research by identifying gaps in federal funding and requiring agencies to report on their progress in improving women's health. In addition to this executive order, the Initiative on Women's Health Research unveiled more than 20 new actions and commitments from federal agencies that will advance women's health research, including announcements from every member of the initiative, which includes all of the agencies within the Department of Health and Human Services and some other agencies and departments that wanted to come forward and join us. For instance, the National Institutes of Health is launching a new NIH-wide effort to close gaps in women's health research across the lifespan. This effort, which will initially be supported by $200 million from NIH beginning in fiscal year 2025, will allow NIH to catalyze interdisciplinary research, particularly on health concerns that cut across the traditional mandates of the institutes and centers at NIH. The National Science Foundation issued what they refer to as a Dear Colleague letter calling for new research and education proposals to advance discoveries and innovations related to women's health. This is the first time that NSF has broadly called for novel and transformative research focused entirely on women's health topics. The Departments of Defense and Veterans Affairs are launching a new Women's Health Research Collaborative to explore opportunities to jointly advance women's health research and improve evidence-based care for service members and for veterans. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS, will strengthen its review process, including through coverage with evidence development guidance to ensure that new medical services and technologies work well in women as applicable before being covered nationally through the Medicare program. This will help ensure that Medicare funds are used for treatments with a sufficient evidence base to show that they actually work in women who make up more than half of the Medicare population. And as one other example, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, in collaboration with the CDC Foundation and the American Board of Obstetrics and Gynecology is expanding training in women's health research and public health surveillance to obstetrician gynecologists, nurses, and advanced practice nurses. NIH in particular is committing to several other notable efforts related to women's health research. For example, 
NIH will establish a new initiative dedicated to research on biomarker discovery and validation to help improve our ability to prevent, diagnose, and treat conditions that affect women uniquely, such as endometriosis. Additionally, NIH is launching its first ever Pathways to Prevention series on menopause and the treatment of menopausal symptoms. And NIH is kicking off an effort to identify and develop new common data elements related to women's health. These are just some of the announcements that agencies rolled out this week, even as the president directs additional action on women's health research through his new executive order. On that note, I want to take a step back and speak to how meaningful this work and the first lady's leadership is for the field of women's health research. As a clinician, a researcher, and the founder and director of the Women's Health Research Center at Yale University School of Medicine, my life's work has been dedicated to improving women's health by improving the research we do on conditions that uniquely, disproportionately, and differently impact women. I've had the opportunity to see women's health research become established as a field of inquiry within science with innovations, with new articles every week, every month, coming out in journals to inform us more. And never before has there been such a comprehensive effort from the federal government to spur innovation in women's health and ensure that relevant federally funded health research works harder for women. This is a huge opportunity for transformative change and will help improve the health and lives of women all over the country. And to fully realize this opportunity, we need to work together across sectors and industries to ensure that all of us, private sector, philanthropy, research centers, advocacy organizations, and the government are doing everything we can to close research gaps in women's health. Thanks to the First Lady's leadership, the initiative will continue taking action to advance women's health research so that women get the answers they need when it comes to their health. With that, I again thank the Society for this invitation and thank them for their interest in the health of women. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Misery, for that amazing presentation and telling us all about this initiative. It's just sounds like incredibly important work and we can't wait to see what what's to come in the future. So with that, that brings us to the end of this session of Monthly Mondays. Thank you again, Dr. Missouri, for joining me. As always, a huge thank you to the amazing Gen Production team for making this episode run so smoothly. And thanks again to all of you for tuning in. With that, I'm Juliana Lemire, and I'll see you next month for Monthly Mondays.